Clay claims Piney drew on him, but the real question is, was it Ballpoint or was it Byro? Welcome back to Sons of Anarchy it's Season been a while, 5. Buddy. We're back. Season 5, buddy. Episode Bad 1, damn. Sovereign. It could have been a permanent marker. Either way, Piney kind of did. He, he, he has been marked. He did draw. He's been erased, which is a, a razor, another... Stationary term. Another stationary well, Let's move on. Let's, let's move on. Talk about that. Let's talk about the facts. Yeah, let's talk about the facts from this episode. So, fact number one it's the first time we see Jax as president. Now, I mean, technically, you could argue we end at season four with Jax as the president. He doesn't have the patch on. Yeah, when you, when you put the patch on, it becomes official. So, therefore, it's kind of like when he stepped down as VP. He didn't really in season two. It wasn't official. This was the first official he episode. He did cut it off, though. Yeah, that's true, but no one else stuck it on, so therefore it was still, <laughs> oh. it was still Jax's, buddy. Uh, come number two, last appearance of Dawn Traeger. Don't really see much of Dawn. She did appear um, last season for a little bit, but that's it. Done. Dawn Traeger. That episode was solely to set up this, wasn't it? Yeah, I think they had to introduce her. I believe her cat. I believe the actress was in Supernatural for a long time, though. Although that, that I couldn't tell you what season, considering they've done about ten hundred seasons. And then the last and third fact of the episode is the first appearance of Pope Damon Pope. You know who the hell Pope is? We're about to find it. Pope's a big man, businessman, dangerous man. Could what? be a thorn in the side. He could be of the SOA. Sheriff Boyd. Formerly known as that on From, make sure you check out season three, not long around the corner. But let's talk about the corner because Sam Crow are riding. It's a children's book, Jackie boy. Because uh, Jax is writing into his wee memoirs and Chibs calls it a children's book, which he meant in a joking sense, but quite literally. Because who's he writing them for? Barry and Jax. I know, Jill children's book. No, he has big your, d- your dad wasted 15 years writing in them, Jax, so fucking real end. What's the point? Big president here, and he's uh, writing in some wee kids' book. Yeah, so we get like the opening montage Jax is president, Bobby's still in jail, Clay is looking more decrepit than Piney ever did. Yeah, at least Piney, you know, he had the oxygen tank. You felt like if he got in a fight with Piney and he got his hands on you, you could be in trouble. Aye. You feel like if you got your hands on clay, he would literally just decimate into dust. I like Piney's walked into the Niners and barred them with an oxygen. Clay couldn't fucking I mean, clay, walk to the other play, side of the room. I mean, he'd maybe walk into a funeral home and lay down for the last time, but Clay is not looking like... Clay doesn't look like he can ride. No, and uh, you need to ride or else you're at the fucking door, so... You can't ride, you can't fault. It's that simple, but Clay... Would you give Clay a fault right now? No. Look at the way he's hanging onto the fucking table. Barely, barely on the chair. He looks like someone that's got two days to live. <laughs> he does. He does. Uh, meanwhile, Gemma's sleeping around with an unknown man, but uh, Nero Padilla, my companion yeah, I mean, Nero. Uh, she's a little bit old, I think, for this um, slut phase. Didn't really like this. I, I know that, I know. season five, kind of, that's her gimmick where she's taking drugs and stuff like this, and she's enjoying the free life. But, I mean, Gemma is in the show, must be close to 60. She says she was 53 in season one, so therefore she's near enough there. Close to 60 then. Late 50s. Uh, should she really be sleeping around? I mean, come on. Yeah, no, this is a fucking disaster. Like, yeah, as bad as Clay's been, Gemma this season does become this bad. I mean, she nearly killed... I mean, we're going ahead, but she nearly kills the two grandkids. My grandkids! My grandkids! Those grandkids were in the car. Yeah, the club members though, they they are uh, they're loving life here. The so. thing is, see if Gemma, see if someone else was drink driving with the kids in the car, she'd want them dead. She'd want a mayhem foot on them. Yeah, it says here on the Wikipedia that the, the club members believe the one niners killed Piney. Well, they I, do. Do they? I think they do because I'm pretty sure. They, they kind of changed it for the cartel to the one niners. No, but Piney says at the wake we 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 kill the we, we kill the lie that Piney Winston was killed by the global cartel. Piney didn't say that at the wake. Oh I no, Op- Opie did. Opie says uh Piney Winston was killed by the global cartel, not by that murderous bastard or whatever he said. Yeah, uh, either way, Lobo won niners. Well, they did blame Black on Clay. On Clay, so I mean, possibly. Yeah, Black going after the old white man. What's this all about? What's that all I about? I thought it was the white men going after the old white men going after the black guys, but uh, yeah, we're we're, in, like it. we're quickly introduced to the nomads here, right? And I say quickly, we see them in the background. We've got Greg the Peg, Johnny, 
and uh, Frankie. Frank straight away, Frankie stands out Aye. as someone that you want at the table, and the other two are just kind of there. We have a guy that looks like a Poundland Fairs, you know, if I don't know, West and Quinn, and then we have another guy who's just got one leg. Aye, Greg the Peg. And, like, I don't want to discriminate against a disability, but I don't know if having one leg should allow you into the club. I think you can be badass with one arm. I don't think you can be badass with one leg. You could argue, though, that you're, you're more... You could argue that you're better physically if you have two arms and because you can maybe defend yourself more and maybe you need two arms to ride in this, but... I don't know, like, what if they have to run away and this guy's leg falls off? No, just... but, I mean, Oscar Pretorius had no legs and he was all right. You know what I mean? So, I think if you had to lose two, you'd rather lose both legs, I think. Than both arms? Aye. Aye, yeah, aye. Well, foot arms, like, what can you really do? No, you, you couldn't ride. No, you couldn't write. Uh, no, you couldn't write, Jackson. You couldn't, you couldn't draw on Penny. No, you couldn't. So <laughs> you, couldn't, you couldn't do any of it, but... Uh, Filthy Phil is riding in the truck solo. And then what does Sam Crow do? They decide to drive off. Yeah, this was like a Mayans <laughs> rookie mistake here. <laughs> Fuck. So, the, the, <laughs> Sam Crow, the guys in front of the truck are way too far in front, and the guys behind, I mean, you can't even see them. Yeah, the Nomad's not delivering on the first fucking I mean, job. for all, they're, they're that far back in the in the darkness, they could have been Niners for all we know. <laughs> they could have been. I mean, like, could have been, but yeah. Could have been. Filthy Phil then gets rear-ended by this, like, SUV. He I flips think, over. We've never seen this before. Like, any time they are, like, guarding cargo or, you know, giving someone, like, a ride, you're, you're always close. Yeah. You're always probably within maybe three car lengths. Yeah. For some reason, they were leaving a big fucking gap here. Well, for some reason, plot purposes. It, it, it's not ridiculous. Like, it's not, like... The front half's in another state and the back half's in fucking Russia, but you well. know, I mean, by, the time they, by the time they came to save Lardas, I mean, but the he, damage was done. He flips over, the Niners get out, I believe Darnell is one of them, he starts spraying his KG-9, um, they set the truck on fire, Filthy Phil's about to die! This is for Leroy! This is for stealing all the mixing balls out of the house, you fat bastard! And then they set on fire, Jackie Boy's like, we gotta save the drop! So they save the drop. No one dies here. Just, I mean, it's just a burnt truck at the end of the day. Yeah, Jack's then decides that they're going to stash this out here tonight. I don't know if that's a good idea. Guess what? The police are on their way. Gunshots, fire. What else are you going to do? It? Um, but Filthy Phil is saved. And then Jack's is like, right, Phil, I need me a shot here. And then Filthy Phil runs away. And then Jax gets the, the opening scene. Finish, wrapped up. Very good. Filthy Phil is apologetic here, but I don't think this is his fault. It came out of nowhere. I don't, I don't like Filthy Phil, and I would take any opportunity to throw him under the bus, even though I don't think there's a bus big enough in the world for him to fit under. Throw him but under the still, truck. But still, I don't think it was his fault. If anything, I think Jack should be apologising to Phil. Nah, we, we Sorry, drove, buddy, we left you hanging there. We drove too far away there, buddy. But yeah. Uh, yeah, I thought Jack's turning around with the flames behind him. Was How many filthy fills could you fit in between the truck and the bikes? <laughs> about two. I about two, like, but Damn. about two. But yeah, pretty cool shot of Jack's. Then Gemma wakes up, hungover. She's wondering where she is. And then Jimmy Smith enters the room. Yeah, Jimmy Smith. What a guy. Nero. AKA Nero. Nero Padilla. I'm a companionator. He walks in, he gets a gun pull on him. I mean, how the fuck's this feel? He gets called a fucking spick within like four seconds. Aye, Gemma, they are sure are true racist colours. Then he's like, oh, you're a cracker then. Nero firing back with some racism, racism of his own. Just needed some black person to walk in and two double hard R's to be hit for these <laughs> two. It was fucking good night. Double combo in the R. Um, yeah, and then she pulls the gun on him. Bit strange, because like, if they all... I don't, well, I say a bit strange, I mean, like... If it was the opposite way about, like, you'd think, why the fuck's Nero pulling a gun on someone? Yeah, weird. We're then introduced to... But see, you think about it, like, ba based on the gender, like, you can pretty much... Just think, well, not, the men don't really get away with anything, but... I mean, women can get away with this kind of deal. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Absolutely. But she's lucky, Gemma... If Gemma shot Nero here, people would probably say it was justified. No, but I think she's lucky Nero's a good guy. See if he was, like, you know, a fucking bad gangster, he'd have fucking dropped her for this, maybe, after... You never know. Aye, ah, yeah. we've seen you look at some of the... Scumbags in the universes of TV shows. I mean, this could have been good night. Exactly, but nah, I don't know. I don't know why she's pulling her gun on him. Should it, was she in any danger? 
Not like really, she's obviously, but... If she's, you can't, you can't, I don't know, she can't really go around, sleep around, then wake up the next day with a hangover and be like, oh, fuck, I'm pulling a gun on you. Yeah, and uh, Nero's sister, I can't remember her name, I'm, I've, I'd am i never liked her, Jimmy Snooker's daughter. Tamina Snooker. Aye, uh, Tamina Snooker. Um, she walks in, asks, are you going to be okay? There's then two young blondes on the couch, and Gemma's like, I thought you didn't sleep with your, your employees, and he goes, oh, that was all you, mama. And um, Gemma's like, really? Really? So not only did Gemma pull a gun on Nero, she's fucking sleeping with the Olsen twins, and they look a bit... Just a day over 18. And Gemma looks a day short of fucking 70, so... <laughs> take a seat, Gemma. Take a seat, Gemma. Chris Hansen wants a word. And she does take a seat in Nero's lounge downstairs at his escort service, but we do have Piney's memorial. But before then... She Te- also leaves her number as well, so... Yeah. Aye. No, Call me back. T- Tig and Juice and, and uh, Chibs kind of question... Well, I'd say Tig and Chibs question why Clay doesn't want to go to Piney's Memorial. They're like, you coming? They're like, nah, nah. I think I'll give this one a miss. And Juice is like, he's not ready for that shit. No, I'm sorry. That's it's not... like, he was first nine. Yeah, what, what's Juice's argument here? He's not ready. Fucking get ready then, you bastard. You can't just... This... That, that, yeah, that doesn't work in this world. Uh, I'm not ready. Yeah. It's not like... Uh, yeah, do you want to go shopping today? Nah, I'm no feeling He's like a it. fucking... You know, no, first nine matters more, but he's a club member. Like, what the fuck? And they killed him. At least they could do is actually turn <laughs> up and show a bit of respect. They just doesn't even know that, though. Just for, simply thinks here he's not ready for that. He's only at a hospital for a couple of weeks. So, uh, he, he, he can he can come in and sit at the table? Aye, but... Or he, cling on to the table, but he, he, <laughs> can't, he can't go and show respects? Pay respects to, uh, he's to probably Piney. afraid they would have threw him in the ground just to save a different fucking at least, hole. At least Tig was, you know, annoyed. No, he was. He was visibly annoyed. He's like, nah, you have to kind of go, Clay. Chibs was also annoyed, but didn't really voice it. He kind of just looked like, fuck's this guy? Nah, nah Tig was taking this bad. We know Tig and Clay's relationships be a wee bit rocky, and he felt bad, obviously, what happened with the Niners, or at least he thought it was the Niners taking down Clay. But nah, Tig wasn't having this. No, he wasn't. And then we had the memorial, and it's a bit dead. Jax walks over to Opie, and it's like, oh, it's a good thing you're doing this, Opie. It's like, I mean, they were there, but it's almost like they weren't there. I mean, they were just standing in the background, and Opie was, <laughs> Opie was on his own. And what would say, obviously, right, it's not just Clay doesn't want to go because he killed him. Well, Greg, it's obviously because Opie's going to be there. Yeah, but like, what's Greg the Peg going to do? Ah, sorry about your old man, never fucking met him, like, but... <laughs> They were met him, but it, yeah, and why would Opie care about Greg the fucking peg, man? Uh, talking what would have happened if Clay did go, though? It would have been awkward, wouldn't it? It would have been. Talking of uh, decrepit, Clay is then looking for an old ring that Rusty gave him. Gemma turns up. Unser says she looks like shit. That's very rich. Rusty come. is a first name member, by the way. Anybody that cares. Yep. I mean, how can Unser say anyone else looks like shit? He looked in the mirror there, buddy. <laughs> no, he is the fucking the biggest guy looking dead. Uh, Gemma then gives Clay the ring. And then he like tries to like console her after he's like, I'll take everything to the grave about the letters. And then she like pushes it and he falls and he's done. They, <gasps> you never touch me again. Like, why? Why the fuck is Clay being a simp here? All right, you may have beat her up, but I mean, fuck, if she, she had just as How much, the turntables? Because I tell you what, She like, had just as much to do with fucking JT's death as you did. No, see the fight, I know, but see the fight they had in the previous season? I, I think the odds were quite even. Gemma gave, her, gave him a fair go. See here. See, they uh, fought uh, new Clay when they made it out the room. No. Fucking Unser, Unser and Chucky would have been carrying Clay's body in the fucking body bag. It is that simple. Jax meets with Romeo Brada. Or, oh, Danny Trejo's still here. We've got Luis Torres talking about they're going to have to come face to face with Damien Pope because it's revealed here that uh, Pope's daughter was killed by Tig. So, of course, we knew this with uh, Roosevelt confirming at the end of the season. And then... He tells Jax that uh, we'll be in touch. And Jax's like, you don't dismiss me that easy, Romeo Parada. He's like, the street finds out you're doubling up as a fed. You'll be dead. Your weight will be dead in a day. Yeah, so Jax here basically turning the tables. I think uh, Romeo thought that he had Jax by the nuts, but Jax is showing Romeo that he's got a big handful as well. Only and he's president. not afraid to squeeze. Don't let that president patch go to your head, man. I, I think already, though, the president patch is going to Jax's fucking head. I mean, we're, we're five minutes into the episode and his head's... He's putting the squeeze on Romeo, like, I mean... No, he is. Bobby gets it. Obviously, Bobby has to Bobby! know. Bobby! knows about Rico. They had to tell him, but he's the only Bobby guy... Bobby knows about everything. Even when Clay gives his wee sob story, Bobby's just looking at him like, yeah, you're talking shit, buddy. You're talking absolute shit. Uh, Roosevelt then pays a visit to the clubhouse, like, who would attack your auto parts truck just out of Modesto? Angry pirates? Says, uh, happy. 
And the which Roosevelt's like, nah, shut the fuck up. I'm not accepting that answer. And then Bobby uh, arrives with Jackie Boy. Tig was in the middle of telling a nun joke, but then it com- got completely shut down. Bobby! And then Roosevelt goes to his black brother. He's like, I'm not going to jump Yo, th- this joke just actually fell flat. No, it did. It's like nobody fucking could. It could have been the greatest thing ever. We'll never know. We'll never know. As but soon as Bobby came up, no one cared. They all walked off. Roosevelt tells uh, Juice, uh, here, if Pope spills into charming, you let me know, black buddy. I think at this point, Juice must be thinking, I'm fucked. Yeah, I mean, I, I know Roosevelt says that his secret's safe, but you, you, you feel like if Roosevelt needs information, at any time he can literally just go back to Juice and... Apply some but see, pressure. I, obviously, Juice is weak, and that's why he rat it. And I don't think most many other people would rat. But could you imagine him like saying to Clay, "Aye, if anything happens, you let me." Clay would have just fucking double shotgunned him but, through his letterbox. Do you not think Juice, right? See, considering what's happened, do you not think the best thing for him? And I know he didn't want to do this, and it's all reason why he was willing to rat and shit and kill a member. But do you not think after the the case died down and that went, the the best thing he probably should have done? Would have been walk away? Yeah. Probably. Leave the club? No, yeah, not tell them about the black thing, because then they might have put two and two together, but he should have. But he didn't. He didn't do it. We then see the members of the one niners were gathering in an empty rail yard here. We're met by the introduction of Damien Pope, and we've also got August Marks, but Leroy is dead. Yeah, we don't have Leroy. Well, we do have Leroy, but he's he's no breathing. Shit, man, is that Leroy? He's, he's like he's little been, bitch is screaming so loud. I cut him up. He's been cut. He's been cut into little pieces here. And you know what? I feel like Leroy was done dirty, not for the fact that he was killed off screen or that he didn't really make it into season five. Just more for the fact that he deserved to die. I mean, is it his fault that Tig was told a lie and decided to mow down his daughter? I mean, I, I guess you could argue that. Leroy was playing a dangerous game dating someone, someone of, of Pope's like um, status. Dating his no, daughter I, I think Le- I think Leroy's just been killed though because he kept attacking the sons, which brought heat to Pope. I don't think it was a simple case of oh you got her killed on your watch. You don't think so? You no, think that I, plays nothing into it. I think Leroy's been killed overnight here. Well, Darnell does say that you know he, it was Leroy. Why why are you pressing me? Leroy's the one that keeps telling us to hit the sons. So. It wasn't his girl. It wasn't his girl, she was mine. But we never see this, you know, we don't see Pope or August Marks. Obviously, we're just introduced to them, but we haven't seen them warn, um, what's his name again? Leroy. Leroy, about not attacking the sons. No, but again, that's happened off screen. You know what I mean? That, that's, an, an off screen special. That's happened, that's happened weeks ago. Yeah, I think this put these guys over in do a sense think, of fuck they've just killed Roy do you think maybe I know there was people saying that there was an issue with the actor and he, he didn't want to be in season 5 and that do you think that Darnell got Leroy's death on screen maybe but I don't think Leroy I don't think I don't think Leroy would have went out like that I don't think he would have just fucking pulled a gun on Jax I think he would have confronted him like, man-to-man. Man. So like, Darnell didn't even say anything. So Darnell's a little bitch? I think Darnell is a little bitch. Even though I think he gets shafted. I think he's a little bitch. Right, let's talk about it. No, no, we need to, we need to talk about the club. The club's at the table right now. Right, club's at the table. Jax is like, say, ah, Bobby's here, he's my VP. Opie cannot be here. Then Clay walks in. Uh, <coughs> Clay's coughing away. His lungs of Kalai sits down. <gasps> oh, oh, and he's like, not as much room with you at my right. <laughs> He's talking about filthy Phil, like fucking... He's about to kill over. He's not wrong, though, is he? See the, see the, the, the smoke that Jax is puffing? That's not helping Clay's lungs. I, 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 I can vouch for Clay. See smoke in the lungs? With any age, it's pish. Yeah, they probably should have just made it a, a smoke-free zone. <laughs> like, Easy did? Uh-huh. Probably the only <laughs> fucking good thing. Probably the only good decision Easy ever made. But even then, like, in this world, it's a bit fucking pish, isn't it? A bit gay, <laughs> it is, but... Uh, see, if ja- see if Jax says I'm going to make it a smoke-free zone, I think someone would have just got up and slapped them. Yeah, Jax explains that uh, the nomads have disbanded. Frankie Diamonds, Gogo, and Greg the Peg want to join, and then they, oh, we can put our feet up. Then he puts his wee prosthetic leg up. Keep an eye on that for later on in the episode, by the way. Opie has stepped away from the club. Is he going to have to get his tattoos inked it? If Opie stepped away from the club regarding the circumstances, I don't think he should have to get his tattoos blacked out. That's I, don't care, but I don't care about the rules. Ah, well, Clay, the guy, the guy Clay had, broke every fucking rule. The, the so. guy's, I mean, he's still got fucking tattoos. I mean, the, the guy's had his wife and fucking father murdered. Yeah. 
to be honest though, I don't think this is fair. Jax knows that, that Opie can't sit at the same table as this guy. <laughs> he, he put it on so the table. So ba- basically what Jax is doing is choosing Clay over Opie. I don't give a shit about... I don't give a shit about your democracy, Jackson. No, and I don't, I don't care that Galen wants Clay or needs Clay for this deal to go through because he doesn't trust anybody else. Jax is the president now. He should be like, no, look, Galen. Ah, but Galen doesn't give a fuck about the deal. He, that's what he wants. He only, he, he only wants to deal with Clay. It's almost like he doesn't care about the money or whatever. Well, why does Clay need to be in the, Why can't Jax and why can't Clay be kicked out? But but then how he, obvious does that look? Jax, that just looks like he's literally just keeping them alive for the sake of the deal. Well, that's what he's told him. Anyway, he <laughs> is he not pretty much just told him? No, him? but... Do you clear already is Clay going to sit like a little bitch outside the fucking chapel door <laughs> for every meeting? I suppose I suppose when Clay is in the club, he's got that reassurance Aye. that um, Jax, Jax can't, kill, can't him. kill him because he'd be killing a patch member. Well, they wouldn't stop Clay, like, so... As soon as, those tattoo- <laughs> as, soon as the tattoos go, though, Clay could go. No, but Jax explains Opie step, stepping away, and then this is when Clay cuts his wee promo. He's like, well, would Opie stepping away? That's something i got to tell this club. You <laughs> know like, that old fat bastard? You know the first nine I killed eight of them? <laughs> 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 Unless I commit suicide, <laughs> could be number nine. <laughs> no, but yeah, he, he says uh, that the, the one niners didn't kill... Yeah, did Rusty really give him the ring, or did Clay fucking take it? <laughs> Clay He says the Lob- Lobo cartel didn't kill Piney. I killed him. Everyone's like, what? You killed him? He's like, I went up to the cabin. He uh, he drew on me. He, he got a permanent marker. He drew on my fucking face. No, but it's the delay of when he says, he drew on me. <laughs> it's, everyone's looking. Jax is like, seething. Rightfully so, by the way, because he just has to sit there and accept this. Uh, yeah, and it's the way Clay tells the story is if he's innocent, he was, he was the victim here. He was the one that was attacked. They had to yeah. kill himself in self-defense. It just makes Penny look like a bitter bastard. No, it does. He's like, I Piney was drunk. He was, he had about ten bottles of tequila beside him. I tried to wrestle the shot off out of his hand, but then, you know, I had to put him down. I had to kill him. He's like, so I killed a member. And then he's like, Opie found the truth. He's the one who shot me. And then everyone freaks out. My problem with this is they t- they have more of a problem with Opie shooting Clay than Clay killing Piney. Like Clay's alive, right? right. Clay is alive, Barely. right? And for what we know. Opie's, kill- Opie's tried to kill Clay because he killed Piney. We've just heard Clay's point and of view. And killed his wife. Aye, so I think, I get it right, Tig, I think, is probably the only guy at this table that's got the right to be more pissed about that because that's essentially what made him kill an innocent woman. And also, you know, the, the shootout on the highway. So if he's more pissed about the Opie refill, fair enough. But everyone else, Frankie Diamond's marking it. He doesn't even know who Opie and fucking Piney are. <laughs> Yeah, they could be two prospects. I didn't get that. <laughs> they could literally be two prospects. And, and, and Gro- and Gogo's prosthetic legs falling off. The heat's fucking melting away at them. No, the nomads are a couple of marks here. Oh, but then saying that, they, uh, but then they, they're on Clay's team. Why are they? Why are they marking it? They're on the payroll. And also, I said this during the we were watching it. I think another reason why Clay's admitted to this. He's like, oh, I killed another member. You got to fuck mayhem. He knew the nomads had fought against him. Yeah. So, he, so he that's knew, another he, reason. He knew he was safe here. Aye. He Fucking was, smart bastard, he didn't was, he? He wasn't giving himself up at all. Smart bastard. Plus, with the story that he told, he's portrayed it as self-defence. Even if the nomads weren't there, I think it's unlikely that everyone would fought. Well, he knows that Jax can't really fought to get him Mr. Mayhem because Jax needs him alive for the deal. Uh, so, I mean, Clay probably knows that he's going to win here. Even if he take out the Nomads, Jax is not going to vote to, for Mayhem. And even if he take out Jax, it's like... I mean, Tig's reaction to this, it's like, Tig's not going to vote Mayhem, I don't think. No, just He's getting bummed by Clay, or he's maybe bumming Clay I don't, know, I don't, I don't know, know if there's anybody at the table that would vote Mayhem. No, we, we need a bit more, right? But uh, let's talk about the big showdown. We've got August Darnell and the Niners meeting with Jackie Boy... August Marks does tell Darnell beforehand to kill Jax. Kill him. You kill that cracker. You get the job done. Pope ain't here, though. So the sons are questioning, well, where's Pope? We're supposed to meet with Pope. And then what happens is Jax talks with Darnell because Marks tells him that Leroy no, is no longer around. So well, this- Jax talks to Darnell. Darnell doesn't really say anything back. <laughs> he pulls a gun in his face. 
It leads to... No, there's no bullet in it, though. He pulls the trigger, empty. Jax then attacks him, and they get pulled apart, and August decides to just kill uh, Darnell there, and then he's like, yeah, you know, he didn't want to be leader anyway. And I, I just can't help feel like that he was done dirty here because he, he was just following Marx's lead. I get Pope said he wants no issues, but Marx is Pope's right-hand man, so therefore... You can assume that so anything that Marx tells you is coming from Pope. Yeah, no, so I, absolutely. I, I think Darnell was tricked here. See, see if Darnell doesn't do this, how does he know that Marx doesn't kill him for disobeying what he told him to do? Yeah, no, no, yeah, you can spin it whatever way you want, but I think either way, he probably will get killed. Like I think, I think from his point of view, it looks incredibly weak if he doesn't kill if he doesn't attempt to kill Jax. After uh, he's just literally been told to. Exactly. So what what can he do? Tig then confronts Clay. Um, he's like, well, what the hell? Why didn't you tell me? They kind of share like a wee reminiscent moment. Clay's going through his wee book. He's like, ah, you're going to have to photo and kill me, big man. Then he whips out the old photographs. He's trying to win Tig over here, isn't he? Come on, Tiggy boy. Let's be like old times. I was in the hospital with you for three weeks. You didn't tell me shit. He hasn't told him fuck all, if we're being honest. He's told him nothing. Tig then receives a phone call. His daughter's been picked up on a DUI. But the officer is a cousin of the Grim Bastard, so he won't be charged if he turns up. You know what's crazy? I genuinely think that Tig's that loyal. That if Clay was honest with him, Tig would have backed as it moves. Yeah, potentially. I actually think Tig would have backed the killing... Well, I mean... <laughs> I mean, the guy was... Tig was the one that basically pushed Clay into off and up. So, would he... Uh, would he totally be against killing First Nine? Yeah. But, but would Tig back Clay's decision to kill a guy to keep him quiet about again, Clay's previous murders about other members? I mean, come on, that's a... I can... He based, thought Opie was ratting on the club. I mean... Well, essentially what Piney's ratting on is Clay's based on murders. what we know I mean we're, we're saying that Teg went before that but you'd have to assume that Teg knows about JT because he knew about he knew about um, Lowell Lowell being buried with the mines so I, I think it's fair to I think if Teg knew Jax would have confronted him I think it's fair to assume that Teg may know that uh, Clay had a hand in killing JT so I I think I think but, but maybe Tig knows that uh, Clay killed Lol Senior, but he doesn't know why he killed him. Because I think if Tig honestly knew about JT, I think Jax would have killed him. I mean, Jax had numerous attempts to oh, kill him. Oh, so Tig. you think Tig may have just believed Clay's story? Oh, it was friendly fire. Aye. <laughs> well, maybe not friendly. Well, something like that. No, I think if Tig knew, why wouldn't Jax have killed Tig after all the shit Tig's done? And fu he fucked the club on numerous I'm, occasions. I'm just saying, look, T Tig was more than happy to kill Opie. So therefore. It's not like killing a fellow member is, like, inconceivable no. to Tig. It's not. See, if Chibs was Clay Sergeant at Arm, I don't think Chibs would have ever came up with the idea, Oh, has got to go, Clay. <laughs> probably probably not, but uh, Tig then goes... Probably not. I don't think there's any probably about it. Like, there's no probably. I say not. He goes to the, the specified location, the real yard. This real yard has been used about ten times already this episode. But I like, like it though. I'm liking this new location. Um, he's like, you take? He's like, you Goodman? Yeah. And then he gets handcuffed. He gets shackled to a valve. It's not looking good for Tig here at this point. Pope then arrives in the Pope mobile. Uh, he gets out. He's like, you know who I am? He's like, how would Goodman have reacted if Tig went, are you that sloppy nigga? <laughs> well, would have dropped him, wouldn't he? But uh, Tig's like, ah, well, this is all over for me. This is where you kill me. He's like, you, you feel my pain, Mr. Traeger. A daughter for a daughter. Yeah, he whips out the, uh, the he opens up the, the thing where Le so Leroy and now Fawn is in here. Bodies are stacking up. There's <laughs> going to be two more very soon. <laughs> two more. I mean, how many bodies do you think this can contain? Right to the, r rimming to the top, man. That's what it's got to be, but. Well, the amount of people Clay's killed, do you think you could fit them in here? That's why he didn't dump Piney in here. I couldn't dump Filthy Phil in here. Nah, it, wouldn't well, it wouldn't work, but no uh, Fawn, wait, Dawn, Fawn, whatever his daughter's called, Dawn. man. Dawn, I think it's Fawn, funny enough, but it doesn't matter, right? She gets burnt alive here. Um, I think there's a, I think there's a poll, it was this justified, but let's just talk about the kill. Justified for who? Pope. I mean, he did kill his daughter. I don't think it's justified, but I, I, I think that you can definitely see why he done it. Well, let's just talk about it. So Tig screams. Um, I mean, it's a pretty. You can't. You can't do anything. 
I think it's more just. I think it's more justified if he kills Tig. Well, sir, I, I'll I, get. I, I don't let's talk about that in a minute, though, right? Let's talk about this. So, Tig's fucked. He can't do anything. He's standing here. His daughter's getting burned alive. For me, I didn't think the acting was great, though. For Tig, uh, well, I, I, I think it suits him. <sighs> It was weird. It's almost, I don't know, it was almost like he was kind of laughing, like, you know, or, oh, baby, no. <laughs> no, but that's, that's... But then again, I don't know how that, he would react in that situation. No, but that's, no, but Tig, he's even then making jokes after she's, I'm going to cut your ugly black fucking head off, you know. <laughs> he can smell her, like, bacon. But it, I think it's just the way Tig is. It's a bit similar to, I don't know, I, I thought this was a wee bit similar to, like, Rick Grimes when he finds out Laurie's dead. It's like... It looks good, but it, 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 it it's kind of, a bit cringy. But looks, yeah, that's that's why I thought. Like, see, see when she's burning, and he's like, "Oh no, oh baby, no baby, oh baby." I mean, I, I thought it was good, but at the same time, I thought, well, "Is that really how you would react?" Like, yeah, I don't know. I've never been in that situation, so yeah. You know what? But I, I was he's handcuffed. There's not a lot you can fucking do. I, to be honest, so. it's probably the darkest death of the show, is it? Aye. I mean, it's fucking. I mean, there's no two ways about it, right? But same time of just let's be real. Darkest death? Now nah, we had a bunch of Ninos thing. Uh, we did that. Well, I mean, she's pretty dark these days. Weren't they a crisp? Crispy. No, but say say you the one Niners, say Leroy killed Tig's daughter, right? Right. Would Tig then capture Leroy and kill his daughter in front of him? No, I think Tig would just kill Leroy. Yeah, and I think that's the difference. But I know sons have a, like a code of don't killing kids, but well, I know Tig was gonna do that in season one, kill the witness. But I do genuinely think the sons wouldn't do that. She was black for all we know. That could have been Pope's daughter. Could have been. Ah, look, I don't know. It's, we can't say. I mean, I don't think it's because he he, he wanted he, he wanted Tig to pay, didn't he? By, and plus, if he's going to be working with the SOA, maybe he felt like he couldn't kill Tig. But then again, how did he think that he could kill Tig's daughter and that the club were going to be okay with that no it's like I don't know because he's powerful yeah, that that's why but uh, yeah Pope and August drive away we're left with Goodman and the cleaner um, he's like I'm going to kill those black bastards I'm going to kill you he's muttering under his breath every fucking ra- racial slur Goodman then because I was like shut up and then he starts choking Goodman uh, Goodman gets choked out and then he shoots the cleaner and dumps both I'm their just bodies I'm cleaner boom 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 aye but I mean yeah, you're just a cleaner I mean was that really ever going to be used as a fouled excuse here let's be honest so Tig dropping bodies he's in crying he's, he's I mean a pretty sad scene here it's pretty dark he falls to his knees he's greeting um, word then gets to Jackie boy for the answer that the witnesses have found him and Chibs guilty of being on that highway and they've also found that Tig Traeger guilty of being the one that ran down Veronica Pope. So yeah, things are not looking good here. Roosevelt's kind of curious about, hmm, it's very convenient these witnesses have come in all of a sudden. Uh, so it looks like we're going to hang out at Nero Padilla's house or his whore house. But weird that they would trust Nero so soon, but here, it's a good, yeah, way, it's a, the, it's a good way to introduce them to Nero. The club, though, like, yeah. I'm not going to complain about that. Answer is then, you know, he's... Talking up Gemma's birds, he's like, yeah, I'm going to give you some bird feeder. And then he goes to lock the door and he gets fucking barred. Pecked. He gets pecked. Uh, and no, yo, they showed the prosthetic leg, right? But I think there was too much emphasis on it. It's like they fucking sh- zoomed in on it, man, to like, hi. It's like zooming in on Clay's oxygen tank. Yeah, we know he's the only guy with an oxygen tank. Like, we know this guy's the only guy with a prosthetic leg. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think it would have been better if it was more of a surprise if we didn't, if they didn't do that. Yeah. And then when we get the moment where Clay is like, I, t- I didn't tell you to kill her. Spoiler alert. But I think that would have had a much bigger Aye. reveal if uh, if that was the case. But when Clay does that, it's almost like they want you to be surprised. But if you've been paying close details and you, you, you already pretty much know by the end of this episode. Yeah, see if we were making fury fizz. Where the fuck is <laughs> Oh, we'd have pretended we were gullible and dumb as fuck. We'd have been all over it. But but I just think it would have been cool. If, is that Ethan so bell? <laughs> but I think it would have been cool. <laughs> we're in a prosthetic um, leg. I think it would have been good if when Clay revealed that they were the ones behind the attack, if we didn't know. Or yeah. even give little, like, subtle hints or something. Aye. But the fact that they zoomed in on the fucking leg. Aye. Like, even like a guy limping. Like a, like a different sort of walk. Aye, and uh, what, when he's leaving or something, Aye. they don't focus on the leg. Aye, but... Ah, well, Kurt Sooty, that's where you went. 
Anyway, uh, let's give. Maybe he, won't, maybe he wanted it to be obvious, but I, I think had to it's... give the nomads a bit more of a purpose instead of just free jobs. I rather jobs. think, why the fuck are these free jobs <laughs> sitting at the table? <laughs> he's free guy. Why, why should we care about these guys? Right. Anyway, quote the episode. I ain't no Spider Man, nigga. I ain't no Spider Man, nigga. Darnell gets the quote. It's going to be the, the only one he gets, so because he's gone, he's done, he's dusted. He's done. MVP was Teg. Oh no, baby. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. I actually thought it's probably the heaviest Teg featured episode since season one for me. I'm not going to complain about that. No, I'm not going to complain. Love, I think love, it me was some, love me some Teggy. I don't think Sons really did have a featured down, episode down, on burn certain burn characters, burn but down. this one was, and yeah, Teg, MVP. I'm going to give this premiere a... I'm going to get a nine. I thought it was a really good way to kick off this show. Yeah, season. a nine as well. Very solid. I mean, not brilliant. I mean, could it have been better, of course, but uh, it was a great start to this season and you get introduced to Pope and... August Marks and then not only do you get one great character but you get two and all of a sudden like just Pope now seems like a big big player uh, the death of Don or Fawn was great so um, it comes to season in the per- chapel meetings as well church meetings with Clay admitting he killed Penny and all this stuff no but seeing it comes to season premieres I can't get a better show than Sons every season premiere hits the fucking hits the money my name's MC not a chance. Not a chance, buddy. Anyway, that's it, guys. 9 out of 10. We'll catch you in the next one. Till then, though. Peace.